Believe it or not, both of these structures are actually mitochondria. We were as surprised as everyone that there would be this mechanism of mitochondrial to become specialized subpopulations. It turns out that mitochondria come in two different types, which could help explain how they can produce energy and make important building blocks of cells at the same time, even when resources are limited. And that was impossible to explain if it's in the, if there's standard chemistry works and there are all these enzymes are in one compartment, that breaks the laws of thermodynamics. It should have compromised the others. So it said there has to be some explanation for this. Mitochondria are known as the powerhouse of the cell for good reason. They are responsible for the bulk of our ability to make ATP, the molecule that provides the energy source for all activities that cells do. But it's become clear over the last few years that that's not all they do. Mitochondria are essential for other things in our body, and that is synthetic reactions that build the building blocks of proteins and lipids that allow us to engage in cell division and cell repair. Now, that makes sense when there are plenty of resources around. But when resources are limited, like if a cell is damaged, for instance, that's been hard to explain. Once the mitochondria is limited for the nutrients with which to make ATP or to engage in synthesis of molecules as precursors, it's got to choose whether it burns it to CO2 and water where it can't get them back. That may, allows you to make ATP or it takes those molecules and use them as building blocks to build things using the same energy that otherwise would go to ATP production. So to figure out how this is possible, Craig and the team took cells and starved them of resources. When they did so, they found that the mitochondria were separating into two very different subpopulations. One, an expert in making ATP, and looks quite familiar to the one you know from school. So the mitochondria that are enriched in ATP synthesis become the perfect mitochondria that you want to put on a textbook to explain how mitochondria are an energy factory. They have highly ordered Christi. They're really efficient at making the super complexes that allow you to make ATP. And they're the perfect ones to take a picture of if you were to show the, the classic mitochondria we all learned about in school. The other were less textbook ready, but they were experts at making the cell building blocks. The other population actually still has the double membrane of a classic mitochondria, but it's filled with filaments of proteins. These proteins seem to be key. As Craig and the team narrowed down what was allowing this division of labor to one specific protein that is at the center of these filaments. There was one linchpin protein that was necessary to make the judgment between these two pathways. That gene has a terrible name and no one knows really much about it. It's called pyrrolene 5-carboxylate synthase. And these two types of mitochondria may be key to help researchers understand things like cancer. And what we show in the paper, one of the most severe cancers, as they grow, the tumor cells acquire these segregated mitochondria that allows them to maintain their growth. Linking this strange mitochondrial behavior and cancer will need more work, which Craig and the team are pursuing. But for now, it's fair to say that these little organelles that we all know from school are a lot more complicated than we thought and likely have more mysteries to uncover in the future.